Hey guys, today I want to show you my Starlink setup. It's easy to deploy, easy to use, great performance, stores easily, stealthy, and great for discreet camping. Check it out. Hey guys, Wade with Howie Van. I want to show you what might be one of the best ways to set up a Starlink internet system if you've got a small camper van. Now I've got the $599 rectangular dish, not the $2,500 in motion dish, but I've been struggling to find a way to transport it, get it set up, as well as something that doesn't stick out much if I might be stealth camping. We've been using it for a couple weeks now, and it's working great. I've got this set up in our 2023 Gretsch Turismo Ion, but it should work similarly in other vans. So the Starlink for RV system comes with a dish, affectionately referred to as dishy, and a router, along with a Cat5 Ethernet cable with proprietary connectors that run between them, and of course a power plug. Since I'm in a 19-foot van, I don't have any exterior storage compartments like a larger rig might have, so I want to keep the router inside. But I need a way to run the cable from the router to the dish on the outside of the van, and since I don't want to leave a window open, I knew I'd have to drill a hole at some point. Let's start with where I put the router. The space below the sofa on the passenger side is open and perfect if you can mount the router to the wall with a mount like this one available on Etsy for 16 bucks. Keep in mind the router can get hot, so you shouldn't pack stuff around it. Getting the router and mount back there is a little tough because it's so tight, but it's not impossible. Then you can run the power cord to a plug on the passenger side of the sofa seat. I like to leave it plugged in so the Starlink comes on whenever I turn on the inverter, but if you wanted to plug it in manually or set up, or set up some kind of switch, it should be pretty simple to do. Like I said before, in order to connect the router to the dish, I knew I would need to drill a hole in the van. I cut the cable about seven feet from the router side connection. It's a 75 foot cable, so there's still plenty available. And the cable is just Cat5 Ethernet cable, so you can clip on an RJ45 connector, and it should work just fine. I did that and added a weatherproof connector to make it easy to connect and disconnect if I ever need to. I drilled a 5 inch, inch hole from beneath the van into the area directly behind the battery compartment, beneath the sofa but inside the rear doors. This wasn't nearly as scary as it sounds because there are existing screw holes already in the frame below the carpet. In fact, I could see daylight when lying beneath the van with the rear doors open. So I simply had to enlarge one of those holes enough to get the cut cable to fit through. Then I had to make sure to add some caulking around the hole to make it weatherproof. I could have put the weatherproof connector there, but I found a better spot at the utility panel on the passenger side of the van where the coax out cable comes. I removed the existing port holding the coax in place by using a Dremel on the two rivets and then enlarging the hole enough to fit my weatherproof RJ45 connector. With the connector in place, I can now use the Starlink anywhere by simply plugging in the router inside the van and plugging the dish end of the cable into the newly added RJ45 port in the utility center. But I don't want to take up a lot of room inside the van to store the dish and the mount when I'm traveling. So I looked at several options, including the flagpole buddy and the Starlink pivot mount. And while they were great for getting the dish into a good position, they didn't help at all with where to store the dish while driving. So there are several options I've seen online where people drill into the hole to disable the motors or even saw off a portion of the dish. But I didn't want to do anything destructive to it, and I wanted to be able to use it with a standard base in case I ever needed to in the future. So that's when my wife and I came up with storing the dish inside of a Home Depot flip tote, or rather, on top of it. So I cut a 5 inch by 2 inch hole in the top of the bin, and then put some of that non-skid shelf padding on there to try to prevent it from scratching. So the pole is able to hang down into the bin and move freely while the dish sits flat on top. And yeah, it works fine. And the remaining 60 feet or so of cable is in the bin as well. So cable, everything in the bin. Close it up. that. Finally, I found a mini Weber barbecue grill cover that covers the bin and the dish and allows the signal to pass through, so it makes for a nice stealth appearance. This is great if you're stealth camping, you want internet, but you don't want your dish to be set up on a flagpole or out in the middle of the street or visible yep. to anyone. So then I took the bin and put it on top of one of our owl boxes and back. Let's see here as we walk around. I just secure it with a few bungee cords and add a few metal hooks to the bin to make it easier to secure. So the owl boxes hold it perfectly, but I think any rear cargo carrier would work. So there you have it, a fully functional Starlink internet system with no setup. It boots up in about three minutes and it does give me the error message that the motors are stuck, but it works just fine from a flat position and the black cover doesn't interfere at all. I don't use it in motion because it's against the terms of service, but I suspect it will work just fine if you chose to. 
So the best part is being able to pull into a campsite, have internet up and running almost immediately. No setup required. If we park under a tree where the signal might be blocked, I can simply move the bin anywhere within about 60 feet of my van to try to get a good clear view of the sky. If you have to move this darling dish for whatever reason, or maybe you parked under a tree, it's really easy just to unhook it, pull the cable up. Take the bin down. Place wherever is more convenient. And plug into your port. The entire bin is super easy to take down, and all the extra cable just fits right inside the bin. And if we're stealth camping somewhere, I can watch Netflix and YouTube all night long and no one knows a thing. Really all I can see is reflections. It's nice and dark. Thanks so much for watching. Hope this was helpful. If you like this content, subscribe, give us a thumbs up, really helps us out, and check out some of the other Van Gear we've purchased.